let's jump into problem eight for a, a direct labor budget. Part A is one of the most straightforward budgets of this whole batch of all of chapter eight. And then part B a little bit trickier. It adds a little twist. So McCluskey company's production requirements are as follows units to be produced. So they've done a production budget, right? They figured this is how many units we're going to sell. Then they did a production budget. This is how many units we're going to make. And then they say to themselves, well, if I got to make 11,000 units, how many employees do I need? How many hours do I need for my direct labor workforce work? That's what this problem is uh, all about. So it says each unit requires two direct labor hours. That's a particularly cruel way of doing two. Uh, when I write the number as a word, some percentage of my students will miss that. Uh, each unit requires two direct labor hours to produce and workers are paid 30 bucks an hour. So the first budget says, assuming a completely flexible labor force, prepare the company's direct labor budget. In other words, if I need more employees, I can bring them in easily. I don't need to be paying overtime or anything like this. So uh, let's get started with a title, McCluskey Company. We are preparing a direct labor budget. And this is for the quarter ended March 31st. We'll need some headings, of course, January, February, March, and for the quarter. And, uh, now we'll take what they've given us. They've said the units to be produced. So we'll start there. And for January, it's 11,000. February, 10,500. March is 12K. And for the quarter, 33,500 units to be produced. We know it takes two direct labor hours per unit. So if I'm going to make 11,000 units in January, it's going to take 22,000 hours. Now, again, just knowing that, right, your workforce planning, you can say, well, it's 22,000 labor hours I need. How many full-time employees is that for the month? And you can make staffing decisions, but let's, let's go ahead and lay this out on the budget. We multiply by the direct labor hours per unit. And in this case, it's two. And so this is my direct labor hours needed for the month. 22,000 for January, uh, what would that be? 21,000 for February and 24,000 for March. 22 plus 21 plus 24, 67,000 for the quarter. And I guess I could have gone 33.5 times two and it is 67,000. Well, now how much is that costing me? Well, I pay my direct labor workers $30 an hour. So multiply by the wage rate, which is $30 per hour. And we're going to get the direct labor cost for the month. 22,000 times 30, $660,000, 21,000 times 30, $630,000, 24,000 times 30, that's 720, $720,000. Now we just need a grand total here. Well, I guess I'll go 67,000 times 30, 2.01 million, 2010, double underline, dollar sign, and I think we're good to go. 660 plus 
630 plus 720. Yeah, I got 2010 both ways. There it is, my direct labor budget. And most questions, that's sufficient. But occasionally, the question, and in reality, there's some quirks like, oh, if we go over a certain amount of hours, we start having to pay overtime, and overtime's paid at a different rate. How do I deal with it? And that's what part B does has us doing. So just similar task, but slightly, you know, one more wrinkle for us to uh, contend with. So let's contend with it. It says, refer to the original data. Assume the company has permanent employees who are guaranteed to be paid for at least $20,000, $20,000, 20,000 hours of work per month. Any amount of work above 20,000 hours is going to be paid at 1.5 times their normal hourly rate. We call this time and a half, right? That's a very typical overtime rate, at least here in Canada, right? If you go above and beyond a certain number of hours, typically you're paid by at time and a half and legally uh depending on the province you may have to be paid at time and a half 1.5 times so they're not going to make 30 dollars an hour for those extra hours they're going to make 45 dollars an hour right 1.5 times 30 30 times 1.5 means their new wage rate for those extra hours is 45 bucks an hour so the companies are wise to try not to get any overtime because it's just very expensive uh anyway let's uh go ahead and give a title here McCluskey Company. We're doing a direct labor budget, this time with some overtime. And this is for the quarter ended March 31st. Same headings as before, January, February, March, and for the quarter. And we're going to start the same way. It's actually the, the first three lines are the same here. So same, so we just, you know, I'm pretending we didn't have part A, right? So it's like if this was a new question, units to be produced. The given information, 11,000, 10, 5, 12,000, and 33,5. We'll multiply that by direct labor hours needed per unit, which was two. And that's going to give us our direct labor hours needed. 22,000, 21,000. And 24,000 for 67,000 in total. So, same start. Now, here's where things get quirky, and that is well, I don't have 22,000 direct labor hours available. I only have 20,000 direct labor hours available. And I'm not able to just bring in new people. Maybe there's a union contract. There's a myriad of, maybe I just can't hire anybody, right? I'm having a hard time finding people. So I only have 20,000 direct labor hours available, but I have 22,000 hours of work to be done. I might be in a position where I have to pay overtime. And that's certainly the case here. So let's just sort of figure out, well, what is our regular hours, so our non-overtime hours, and of course we've gone over 20, so we're going to do 20,000 hours at regular rates each month, because we've gone over each month, so that's 60,000 regular hours, and then I'm going to have some overtime hours, 2,000, 1,000, and 4,000, just the amount we've gone over the regular hours, so 7,000 in total. Uh, okay, so then let's figure out the regular pay. And it's 20,000 hours at 30 bucks an hour, 20, uh, so just put 30 in brackets and you know that means $30 an hour. So 20,000 times 30 is $600,000. Uh, and it's the same, like 20,000 times 30, 20,000 times 30. So 1.8 million of just like regular pay within the normal amount of time. If they just work the amount of hours we had, they'd have worked and earned $1.8 million, but we got to pay some overtime. And our overtime pay is $45 an hour because they get paid one and a half times their regular rate. And they work 2,000 hours in January. So 2,000 times uh, 45 is $90,000 of overtime. It's $45,000 of overtime here. 
and I guess it's going to be 180,000 of overtime in uh, uh, March, 4,000 times 45. Yeah, 180,000 for a grand total here of 90 plus 45 plus 180, $315,000 of overtime pay. So our total labor cost, 600 plus 90 is 690. 600 plus 45 is 645. And 600 plus 180 is 780. 1.8 million plus 315 is 2115. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we've answered it. We've solved the budget, but I do note this last sentence. It says, please include the overtime premium for each month. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, isn't that just this overtime pay? And the answer is no, that's not the overtime premium. The overtime premium says, if we didn't have to pay any overtime, in other words, if we just paid flat rate of $30 and we, we brought them in for those extra hours, what what would we have paid them? And then what did we pay extra because of the overtime? And, and basically the answer is, it's not $45 an hour, the full overtime pay, it's the premium you pay above regular. So it's $15 an hour extra for all of these overtime hours. So you would multiply the $15 extra by the overtime hours, so it would be $30,000. But an easier way to do this is to look at the previous part of the question, where we did direct labor budget and we go, okay, I paid these guys 660 if it was completely flexible. Because I have to deal with overtime, I paid 690. The premium due to the overtime is $30,000. Just the difference between the two. Now the math on it is the difference between regular pay and overtime pay times the overtime hours. So 15 times 2000, it is 30,000. In this case, it's we paid uh, we would have paid 630 if we could just pay a flat rate of $30 an hour. We end up paying 645. There's a $15,000, I should note, this is overtime premium. And uh, 780 versus 720, it's $60,000. So in total, the overtime premium, 115 or 2115 versus 2010, it's 105 thousand dollars in overtime premium now why is that relevant why did i take the time because the, you know the budget is done here this is just a little extra line the reason is we don't consider that extra overtime cost to be part of direct labor again direct labor is the amount we pay in normal wages when the person has their hands on with the product the direct labor worker has their hands on with the product so this is considered an overhead cost. So this 105 or the 30,000 in January, 15 in February, uh, 60 in March, this is overhead cost. The rest though, like this amount 2010 is direct labor cost. So sort of a funky side issue on the question. Uh, but there you have it at a fundamental level. We figure out how many units we want to make. We figure out how long it's going to take to make them. And from there, we can derive our direct labor cost. We've done it. We've solved 84A. As always, if you get to the end of these videos and they helped, don't be shy about hitting that thumbs up button. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.